So in the subcostal four chamber view, we have the patient in the supine position lying flat. And in this position, we want to have the transducer and we want to first put it about two to three centimeters below the xiphoid process, okay, and direct it towards the patient's left shoulder. So let's orient ourselves here, okay? So notice that this right here is our transducer, okay? And we have the patient's right side here, so this will be their right shoulder, this would be their left shoulder, okay? And then what we're doing here is we have the transducer below the xiphoid process, about two to three centimeters. We have it directed towards the patient's left shoulder, okay? And what we want is the marker on the transducer going towards about three o'clock, okay? So that would be right here. So the marker's this here in yellow. So notice that in yellow we have the marker. So this will put an M there. And notice it's going towards the three o'clock. Okay, and three o'clock meaning, if you imagine a clock, this is 12, that's three, this is six, this is nine. We have it going towards this three o'clock here. Okay, we want to hold the transducer palm down, and this helps facilitate uh, the cephalad ang angulation. The depth should be about 16 to 24 centimeters in this case. And we are saying this is a subcost of four chamber view. So four chambers because we're going to be able to see the four chambers of the heart. Okay, so let's look at the, what we actually see here. So notice that this down here is the liver. Okay, that's the liver. And if you look at our cartoon image, this being the transducer, this here in yellow, the marker. Okay, the transducer would sit here. And then this right here is the marker. Same thing with this transducer and the marker of it. Again, directed towards three o'clock, we have it just below the xiphoid process going towards the patient's left shoulder. Notice that we're starting to see the liver show up, okay? That's that liver portion you could see there, okay? And that would be this here, would be that liver portion as it covers that area, and this is it here, okay? So notice that the first area, the most anterior portion of the heart, we'll see our right ventricle, Okay, and notice that that's this here, the right ventricle, RV, and we can see that here in this image. We're also getting to see the left ventricle, all right? So here's the left ventricle, the LV is this portion, and you could see that there. Now we have the atria, okay, the right atria, which is here, the right atrium is in this image, is there, okay, and there's where it is, and then the left atrium, pretty much the most posterior portion of this image or lower portion, that's the left atrium. And notice that we can see the valves between both the right and left side of the heart, okay? on the Between the left atrium and the left ventricle, we have the mitral valve, which is this portion here. So this would be the mitral valve, we can see that. And then we have the tricuspid valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle. So this is the tricuspid valve seen there. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. The four chambers, we can see the uh, valves between both the atria and the ventricles uh, present there as well. Okay, so in these we can assess the size and the function of the left ventricle and the right ventricle. The left atrium and right atrium tend to be better assessed in the apical four chamber view, uh, but you can see them here as well. We can look at the motion and if there's any regurgitation at the mitral or tricuspid valves. Okay, so for any mitral regurgitation or tricuspid regurgitation, and you can also see the pericardium, okay, the outer layer of the heart. Is there any pericardial fluid maybe surrounding it? Here we may see it as black, okay, meaning that it's fluid that's surrounding the heart uh, between the pericardial in the pericardial sac. So hopefully that makes sense. Now I'll remove these labels so you can uh, see them here, okay, and same thing in this one. So hopefully that makes sense what we're looking at. Okay, uh, so let's just kind of review what we discussed before we end here. So in this position, I'll erase this here. Okay, what we want to do is take that transducer, put it below that xiphoid process, direct it towards the patient's left shoulder and have the transducer towards the three o'clock here. Okay, so three o'clock and at that position, we pretty much want to hold the transducer palm down and try to facilitate that cephalad angulation in order to see the chambers. Okay, you can adjust the depth often between 16 and 24 centimeters uh, should be sufficient, but you can do that based on the patient. What we can see are, as the name implies, the subcostal view, we're getting the four chambers. So we saw the right ventricle, okay, which is that most anterior portion. We saw the left ventricle, the right atrium, 
in the left atrium, and then we saw the valves between the atrium and the ventricles between, okay, the mitral valve here and the tricuspid valve. And remember that we have our liver that sits uh, right in this anterior portion, okay, that on the top portion, you can see the liver that's involved there. So hopefully uh, that makes sense. Okay, so great for assessing size and function of the ventricles, the left and right ventricle. Uh, we can see the left atrium, right atrium, but often better assessed in the apical four-chamber view. We can assess mo motion and regurgitation of the valves, so the mitral and tricuspid valves specifically. And we can look for any evidence of uh, effusion or pericardial effusion around and in that pericardial sac. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the ekg course you'll see examples of lectures okay why we developed this okay a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning ekgs having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know still struggling so uh, my struggle is a struggle that i don't want you to have in learning them okay you can read all those introductory books but honestly they are not uh, enough okay and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So 
Uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.